presentation uh, even more special by inviting five interns, five recent alumni, to our panel. Experiential education is defined as learning that occurs outside the traditional classroom. It allows students to put theory and academic content to real world experiences. At Siena Heights, this includes job shadows, practicums, internships, field trips, service learning, clinicals, student teaching, field practice, and community-based learning. Experiential learning has long been a high-impact practice in higher education. Please join me in welcoming our expert panelists this evening, Mike Lalo, class of 2014, Christina Henning, class of 2017, Jacob Jenkins, class of 2020, Casey Rapoon, class of 2019, and Chris Grodi, class of 2020. Chris, would you please introduce yourself? Yes, hello, my name is Christopher Grodi. I graduated in uh, May of 2020 with a dual degree. I was a part of um, the first mechanical engineering partnership between Siena Heights University and the University of North Dakota. Um, I started my internship at Adrian Tool in early 2018. Throughout my two years at my internship, I was able to not only build um, skills and um, uh, lessons, I was able to build my resume to land me a job at uh, Agate Manufacturing um, as soon as I graduated. Awesome, thanks, Chris. Christina, would you please introduce yourself? Sure, uh, I'm Christina Henning. I graduated from Siena in 2017 with a bachelor in social work. Um, my internship was at Fostering Solutions in Adrian, a foster care and adoption agency. And then I went on to work in foster care and adoption and then graduated with my MSW from Wayne State University. Um, and I now work as a clinician and case manager in Detroit. Excellent, thank you. Jacob, would you please introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, how's everybody doing? My name is Jacob Jenkins and I graduated Siena in May of 2020. Uh, I was a communications major and a marketing minor. I had the pleasure of interning at the Lenaway Intermediate School District where I was a PR intern. So I assisted the PR manager there. Um, I was fortunate enough to get a fully funded fellowship to Michigan State University, which I'll be attending this fall to complete my master's in communications. And um, I was also a TRIO McNair scholar also. So they helped me throughout the way a lot in terms of applying for grad schools and showing me different tips and things like that. So I, I had a very fun time at Siena and just a very busy time, so yeah. All right, excellent, thank you. Uh, Casey, would you introduce yourself, please? Hi everyone, my name is Casey Rapoon. I graduated Siena in May of 2019 with a bachelor's in business administration and a minor in communications. I did my internship with the marketing department at Siena, actually, my final semester at Siena. And then now I currently am in Tampa, Florida, working for Ford Motor Credit Company in a leadership development program. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, and last but not least, Mike, would you please introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Mike Lalo, uh, graduate in 2014, uh, Bachelor of Arts in Sport Management. Um, during my time at Siena, I did four internships, Eastern Michigan Athletics, High Velocity Sports, Career Services with Melissa, and uh, University of Michigan. Um, and I am actually employed with the University of Michigan in the Athletic Department, managing Michigan Stadium. Awesome, thank you. Well, Thank you all for agreeing to uh, share your stories tonight and enlighten our viewers uh, as to the, the value of experiential education. Uh, so this first question, uh, I'm gonna direct it to Chris and Jacob. 
How did your internship influence your decision to follow the path you have chosen? Well, uh, for me, I knew I wanted to go into public relations since about my sophomore year in college. And um, it was very hard finding internships for public relations because it's so, I feel like for any field, it was so competitive. And ones you think you probably got in a bag, someone who has a better connection than you might get in and things like that. Well, uh, my mentor and my advisor, Callie Clear, uh, she helped me find an internship that was luckily <laughs> in Adrian, which I didn't even think a public relations internship would be. So it was, um, I was fortunate enough to just be right here, right there in the city because I know a lot of my other uh, classmates, they had to go an hour away to Toledo or Ann Arbor or somewhere, Saline, to do their internships. And I was, I was fortunate enough to just have it right down the road at the LISD. And so doing that internship, it just made me want to do PR even more, do brand management and marketing and things like that for an organization or a company. Well, in that terms, my internship, I was doing it for the school district. And it wasn't just Adrian School District, it was for the whole county. So we were doing things at Blissfield or Tecumseh or uh, Britain Deerfield. It, we just managed um, Facebook pages and we went to different events, took pictures and just did press releases for news sources and things like that. So it was a great experience in interacting with different people. So it just made me want to keep pursuing it and keep getting better at it and things like that. Great, thank you so much. For me, Chris, um, I would say that there are numerous things that someone can do with a mechanical engineering degree. So for me, getting my internship, I was able to find the path that I wanted to take um, at Adrian Tool. Um, it, it is a smaller business and I just like the smaller business model. And I was able to find myself um, at a small business. So ultimately when I graduated, back in May, um, I pursued going to a smaller business, which is Agate. Um, I find myself more involved with um, you know, the design and I can see the process from start to beginning. Okay, excellent, thank you. Uh, this question is for really any of you, but I'm gonna direct it to Mike and Christina. Uh, can you name three skills you improved or learned while completing your internships? I'll turn it over to Christina first. No pressure. Um, <laughs> I, I would say just generally speaking, definitely just professionalism for, for starters. So uh, learning how to navigate a professional realm, how to dress, how to communicate with people, um, basic things like showing up on time or early, having work done and completed um, in a timely fashion. Um, and then things more specifically to the field that I was going into. So I was a social work major. Um, and so working at a foster care agency or interning at Fostering Solutions, I learned about um, child welfare in general. So I got to see the different realms of foster care, adoption, all the things that go into that and working with the, the children, the families and the court systems. Um, so it was a really incredible opportunity. Uh, I think that was a couple of things. I'll give it back to Mike. Thank you. Yeah, so I think anytime you go into an internship, you kind of have an idea of what your, your strengths and weaknesses are and possibly what you want to work on and what, you know, what you think you might excel at. Um, Based on my internships and what I had, I think some of the areas that I really uh, grew were communication, critical thinking, and budgeting. And, and the reason those three kind of stand out to me is that I don't think you can ever be good enough at communication. Like you don't realize how much in the workplace setting you actually communicate, whether it's phone call, text, email, face-to-face uh, -face contact. You know, just every internship I had was heavy in the communication side. Uh, and then critical thinking, you know, thinking outside the box, um, especially working in facilities now, how do you solve things um, that might not necessarily go as planned the first time. So, you know, kind of having a plan to kind of tackle everything. And then finally, uh, like I said, budgeting, um, you know, right now that was a big one for me. And that was kind of one of the things I wanted to get better at was, you know, when you're managing, you know, high end budgets. Uh, it, it's just, I think it's an important skill to have, not only just in the workplace, but just life in general. So those are the three that kind of stood out to me. 
Excellent. Thank you very much. This is a question for all five of our panelists. Uh, so maybe we'll, we'll have Casey start it off. Uh, what was your biggest aha moment during your internship experience? Okay, so my biggest, I guess I would say, aha moment or what I would consider an aha moment was like learning all the different skills and then finally clicking together. For me, with, with my internship and being in the marketing department for Sienna, it was what are the proper ways to market the school, market every, like market things that are going on, promotions, or just like, like getting events out there. And when you get it all put together and putting all those little skills that you know how to do, putting it all together to see the big picture, to me, that's where the marketing department fell for Sienna and all the little things it made, everything to me made sense. And it made me realize with everything else I've done in life, the, how the little things all click together and the best way to do it is through marketing the correct way. And that's one of the things that I did learn the proper way to market and the best ways to market. Okay, thank you. Do I get brownie points if I say career services or no? Uh, um, so uh, just in general, I think, I, I don't know if I really had a huge aha moment. I think I took something, each, each internship was a learning experience for me. Um, there were things I liked about each one and things that I realized that it kind of made me realize I didn't want to do. So I think that's important to learn when you do the internship process. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, this is exactly what I want to do the rest of my life. This could be something where it's a learning curve where you're like, I'm getting my foot in the door. I'm learning how this industry operates. And I realize I don't really want to do this sector of the industry. Um, so, you know, I kind of learned that as I went, you know, I did some marketing I did some uh, community sports and and during those, I kind of, you know, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't something that I truly enjoyed, um, like, to, like passionate about where I really wanted to do that the rest of my life. And so it probably wasn't until I got to the University of Michigan when I was working in facilities um, that I realized that this is kind of really where it clicked home. Like, this is exactly what I wanted to do, uh, manage facilities, oversee the day-to-day -day operation. Um, but I think, you know, just looking back on it, I guess my aha moment was probably learning that it's okay to realize that this isn't exactly what you want to do. You know, you're doing this stuff to learn, um, find out what it is that interests you and where, what path you want to take to further your career. Thank you. Somebody else want to jump on this one? I can go. Um, for me, there wasn't really, it, it would be really difficult to pinpoint it like, ah, moment I feel like the overall experience and maybe an aha case would be more correct for me um, there was a, a SIB group of four that I was working with specifically for most of my internship um, and getting to see the case from there's mom working really hard to be reunified with her kiddos these kids really wanting to go home with mom but not really understanding what's going on and leaning on those people to support them and being just so strong and resilient for like all these kids that are like five years old. Um, it was really incredible. And then seeing the foster families working so hard to give these kids a safe home and also help out that bio mom who wanted to be back with her children and seeing the, the work done by the social workers and the court system and how intricate and complex it all is. Like there's no simple human. We're all so complex and have so much to us. So it's just really beautiful to see it all play out. Great, thank you. In my field of work, um, I do a lot of modeling and uh, CAD software. So, and then the prints are transferred over to the shop. So my big aha moment was about, you know, six months into my internship, I started learning from the shop, um, the employees on the shop and how they fabricate things and the best way to do things so once I figured out, you know, to do something this way instead of that way, I really excelled in, you know, the process and really streamlined um, a lot of my prints. Jacob, do you have anything you'd like to add? 
I was sitting there trying to think of like an aha moment. And that's why I was like, I'm not too eager to chime in. But I think for me, the aha moment would probably be just learning something new every day. And I know it sounds kind of cliche, but that's really how it was in my internship. It was like things that you probably thought you already knew, like is that 10 times more just like how in depth everything is. Uh, with public relations, you'll think it's so straightforward, like, okay, I just go in here and I write a publication for them and I make them look good. But really it's like, oh yeah, well, you gotta have a list of like your media outlets, like you gotta build your relationships with people. You have to do this. You have to make sure this is correct. Cause if, and then like with PR is so, you have to be politically correct. So you have to make sure like, you're not saying the wrong thing. You have to make sure that you're addressing everyone with, or a whole target audience the right way. Cause you know, with so many things going on, like um, Black Lives Matter, LGBTQ and things like that, you have to stay current with everything, you know, different lingo and languages and names for different groups change almost every day. And if you mess up and you put out a publication with the wrong, um, with the wrong name of a group or something like that, it comes back to you. So that's, that's something that I learned uh, very quickly. So that was probably like my aha moment was just learning different things, learning different things in society every day. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you all. Those were great examples. Uh, the next question is for Casey and Chris. Uh, was your internship required for your degree? For me, um, my internship was not required for my degree, but I feel um, that as Sienna develops with an engineering program, I feel like it is such a helpful key to get to get students involved in understanding the you know mechanical aspect um, that it will be required eventually. But um, like I said, it wasn't required for me, but I definitely feel like it gave me um, like, a, like an edge over my classmates who didn't have uh, an internship. Um, piggybacking off of that, mine wasn't, uh, mine wasn't required either for a business degree. However, with doing it with the marketing department, it gave me another aspect into a different side of business that I've never really, I guess, studied or really ever worked in or really got any experience in. So just like Chris said, I think it did give me a little upper hand compared to some other people who don't normally do internships. Like it was great experience and it's a great alert great learning experience and all of that as well. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, and it, I think it's an, an important uh, place to note and, and we'll have a, uh, a slide up with contact information at the end, but um, internships aren't required of all majors at Siena Heights. So uh, we definitely encourage, thank you, Kate. Uh, we definitely encourage uh, students to, to participate in some form of experiential learning, whether it's service learning, uh, it's required in their major, or it's an elective. Uh, and here's the, the list of faculty and, and staff that coordinate internships for the various programs on campus. Uh, rushing right back to our questions. Uh, this is for Mike and Casey and Christina. Uh, what, what was it like starting out in your field? So this is a two-part question. What was it like starting out in your field? And how did the internship make this less challenging? Um, I'll start off. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest, when you first start one, you're nervous. I mean, my first one was my freshman going into my sophomore year. And, uh, you know, you're doing something for the first time kind of in the in the real world. And you're trying to figure out what to expect and you're not entirely sure. So um, to be honest with you, I was nervous that, you know, you're trying to try not to mess up. You're trying to showcase yourself, you know, you kind of treat it like a tryout, but you're also trying to learn as much as possible. So, you know, but at the same time, you're excited. You know, it's an opportunity for everyone and uh, 
you know, especially for yourself, meet new people, network, and all kinds of positives that come from it. So, you know, it's kind of a mixture of emotions that, you know, you kind of go into it. Um, less challenging would probably be, you know, just the fact that you kind of, you know, once you get your feet wet, you kind of realize that you can do this or, you know, you, you have an interest or desire in it and, you know, you want to keep learning. So, you know, each day is something new and you're there to learn. And, you know, when you have a good group of mentors in your internship that are, are teaching you along the way, it makes it really enjoyable. So, you know, it, I think it's okay to be nervous, be excited, you know, whirlwind of emotions going into it. It's something new, but, you know, my biggest advice would be going with an open mind and a willingness to learn. Because if you go in with a closed mind, you're, you're not going to get everything out of it. You know, you get out of an internship, what you put into it. And I think that's the most important thing to remember is if you put 110% in, you're probably gonna get the most out of the internship that you possibly can. If you don't really care, then you might not have a positive internship experience and it might not help you down the road. So. I think my biggest, like, I guess, like starting out in my field, so I'm in like a leadership development program is kind of my position. And I, basically it's like I kind of get to experience in different in different areas of the business itself I get to experience different departments within a within about a three-year period two and a half to three-year period and going into the with my internship I got to experience an area that I'd never had experience in before and doing this internship in this area it made me feel more comfortable being willing to try out new areas and, and figure out exactly where I want to go. And I think that's very important. And that's one thing to do with, that's very helpful with experience with the internships and having that experience is you get to try what you like and see where it goes. And that's one thing that I think the, a bit, an internship is very helpful with. I think for me, uh, definitely having the opportunity to learn from all of the, the social workers um, who were already in the field working and been doing it for years and like what worked well for them? What, what was a struggle? Um, what, what were everyone's styles and what could I pick and choose from to kind of apply to myself as a, as a future social worker and professional? Um, also, there was a class, a child welfare class uh, in combination with my internship that allowed me to earn a certificate and bypass tons of training um, upon graduating so I could go straight into the field um, and bypass a bunch of stuff, which made me a lot more marketable um, to foster care agencies that I was applying for for a position. Uh, so I was very grateful for that opportunity. All right. Excellent. Thank you all for, for sharing. Uh, and, and Christina, you, you sparked the next question, which is, do any of you have suggestions for specific courses or programs that happen on campus that current students or, or, or uh, incoming students that are gonna be experiencing internships uh, might take to enhance their employability? Anything that, that you can think of? I'll go first, Melissa. Um, I would say take classes that are tailored towards what you want to do in your career field. Um, for instance, uh, like I said earlier, being a mechanical engineer, there are several different career paths that you can take. Um, for instance, if you like automotive, you can take more um, automotive focused engineering classes. So I, I guess just what you like and uh, just, just take those classes. And One course at uh, Siena. <clears throat> that I kind of took on mistake, but I, I'm glad I took it was called a management principles. And um, I feel like a lot of people who work in any field, one day you want to be, you know, the director or manager, you know, of your department. So I feel like man management principles is a great class for any major if you want to take that initial step because it teaches you how to be a good manager, how to treat employees, the steps and, and techniques you can take to calm down situations or handle certain uh, situations. Um, like I said, I took it by mistake, but I'm, I'm glad I took it because it, it opened my eyes on, even if you're not a manager, just how to just to treat people in a business setting, how to treat people with good ethics and things like that. So that's one course that I kind of recommend everybody. 
Yeah, that's a great suggestion, Jacob. Um, kind of going off of what both of them saying, um, especially with what I believe it was Chris said it, just, I would say a lot of like, we, like Sienna offers a lot of electives, even if they are online. I think if you want to at least get experience or at least become more knowledgeable in a specific area to take those electives and use up. Yes, you, it's not always required to have the electives, but it's very, like to me, that was very beneficial to me to take a lot of the uh, electives because it made me kind of decide where I truly want to go, what I liked and what I didn't like. Okay, think, thank you. I think too, like in any field that you're going into a second language is always extremely marketable and very beneficial. Um, and I will say the Spanish classes at Siena are excellent. Um, the professor, Nick Kaplan, is a phenomenal instructor. Um, so having a second language definitely benefited me working in Southwest Detroit, which is Mexican town Detroit. Many of my clients speak Spanish. The community has a lot of Spanish speaking um, individuals. So if you can take a second language, if it's Spanish, great. If it's something else, that's awesome. And kind of piggyback off what Christina said, um, I took ASL, American Sign Language. That's extremely helpful, uh, especially in today's workforce. I'm hearing that they're trying to hire a lot of people that have some knowledge or great knowledge of sign language because there are more deaf people uh, from the community who are starting to come into business and things like that. So that's extremely remarkable as well if you know a little bit of sign language. Anybody else have anything to add? These are these are awesome suggestions. I don't I don't know if um, it's still a thing, but I also had the opportunity to be an undergraduate teaching assistant uh, in the social work program. Um, so having that opportunity was really incredible. Um, also, other things on campus like being an RA or being involved in sports or other organizations is always. Um, great and learning how to build communities and connect with people. Yeah, that, that's a great point, Christina. Um, and I'm sure, I'm sure you all belong to the associations on campus that are attached to your academic programs, like the social work organization or the engineering club. Uh, so those are those are other great extracurriculars to to give you some experience and some opportunity. Uh, this question is for Mike and Christina. For students with little or no experience, how can they grow their resumes? Um, I think just get involved, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I, I grew up playing sports my whole life, so I was a competitive person. Um, so my thing was when, when you go into an interview or you have an opportunity to get a job or an internship, you know, you're trying to look at it like what, what's going to separate myself from the rest of the field? Like what's going to stand out and give me that opportunity that I'm, I'm striving to achieve? And so I think, you know, to, to use a sports term, this is just to stay hungry. Um, you know, don't, don't just settle and say, I don't, I don't have any experience or anything yet. I mean, go find it. It's out there. There's opportunities everywhere. I mean, the, the slide on the slideshow right now kind of shows that, that there's opportunities for you to take, but it's up to you whether you want to take them and it's up to you whether you want to put 110% into them or not. So um, I think it's just, a, it's a personal choice where you, you have that ability to, to grow yourself and, and make yourself as marketable as possible. So when you, when you leave school and you go to try to land that, that career job or that dream job or whatever it is, um, you know, you're ready to rock, you're ready to hit the ground running and you've done all you possibly could to put yourself in a position to, to land it. I think as Mike said, uh, definitely stay hungry and ask your academic advisors, you know, what, what do they recommend? What's, what, what would help you in the field currently? What are people looking for in your resume? Um, a lot of the social work classes I had, we had guest speakers who worked at various agencies in the field and they'd come in and speak to us. Um, so asking them, you know, what, what can I do to build my resume? What kind of things are you looking for? Um, what would be helpful? What training should I take? Um, just that kind of stuff. 
Wow, thank you both. Uh, some, some great advice. Uh, the next question is for Jacob and Casey and Chris. Uh, could you walk us through the path you took to find or to, to land uh, the internships that you had while you were students? How did, how did your internships come to be? Yes, so the, how I got my internship at Adrian Tool was actually through um, something that um, Melissa came up with. Um, well, I can't say she came up with it herself, but it was a reverse job internship fair. Um, we were advertising ourselves to the employers. Um, so I was able to, you know, set out all the work I've done over the last couple of years. And then they would come around and, you know, check it out, ask questions. Um, we came up with our, like, you know, 30 second commercial for ourselves. And um, that's how I got my internship. Um, as soon as it was over, I emailed everyone that I got their card from and saying that, you know, it's a pleasure meeting them and I would love to have the opportunity to uh, further speak with them. So that's how I got mine. Uh, <clears throat> how it came about for me, like I said earlier, uh, one day I was just sitting, like I said, I was looking for a lot of internships because I'm from Detroit. I was looking for them a lot in the Detroit area. And um, my um, advisor, Callie Claire, she emailed me one day. It was like, hey, you want to do public relations? Like, here's your opportunity right here in Adrian. So I applied. And um, <laughs> luckily, I think it was between only me and another candidate when I went to go interview. It was it was small. Uh, not many people, I guess, really knew about it or really was interested. So down to me and another person. And he ended up choosing me. And... Um, Andrew Munson, who was the community relations director there, who I was under, uh, we still have a great relationship to this day. Like, you know, we, you know, he texts me here and there. He texts me the other day, like, hey, how's your family doing during this time? Like, and uh, we used to go out to lunch sometime during our, during our lunch breaks at my internship. Like, we just built that personal relationship. And I think that's what really these internships is about, not just getting experience, but also making connections with people because you never know who that next person knows. So that's one thing I should say is like always make good connections with people. So how my internship came about, I wasn't, I mean, I was looking for one casually, but not really sure what I wanted to do. I was actually taking a class for my minor, my, um, I think it was a Spectre, cl Spectre class and Doug Goodnow, who was my, was teaching the class was, who works in the marketing department mentioned that, hey, if you want an internship, like you can go check it out, see if they are having any internships. So he went with me down to the marketing office and we met with, um, we met with everyone that works in there. And then I talked to Sarah to get it all set up and talk to my advisor. It was really, it was kind of like it, it, one of those experiences that kind of falls in your hands in a sense when you're not looking, which ends up being one of the best things that I've ever done. Like I, my internship helped me so much. It helped my learning, it just it helped me feel better about what I was doing with what I'm going into and being able to see in another area that I wanted to actually go and I guess, pique my interest in. Okay, excellent. Uh, thank you all for sharing. Uh, I'm gonna open this up to anyone. Uh, is there any other advice that you would have for students regarding internships, experiential education, uh, or moving into their careers? I think the biggest thing is to talk to your advisors. Like if you're really thinking you want to do something other than taking classes, you want to actually try to get some in person, like get some actual experience because there's only so much you can learn in a classroom. It a lot of, at least and I know for me and I know how a lot of other students, a lot, it's a lot more hands-on learning. You learn more, you get a better understanding of things. I think you like talk to your advisors, talk to your professors and they can find you a way or they can point to and give you pointers on which ways to go and how to, I guess, get you pointed to the correct way that would be able to help you. I just think you like to reach out, use connections, 
Sienna has a ton of people to go to reach out to career services, any advisors, you can walk into most office, uh, actually not most, you can walk into all offices and you can usually talk to someone and they can help lead you to the like in the right direction of how to get more experience to, I guess, almost better yourself, better your education and all of that. Anybody else care to share? I think also um, if you can't find an internship, um, job shadows are really excellent too uh, because there's not all these requirements with it and you get to, you could do it for a week, you could do it for a day and ask any of these professionals that you have these connections with or your professors have connections with to say, hey, can I just follow you around for the day and see what you do? And then that's kind of how, um, you can narrow down to like, this is something I'm really interested in or could be good at. And this is stuff that like, that's not for me or I just wouldn't be good at that. Um, so job channels are also an excellent opportunity. Uh, I see a question here from uh, Leslie Murphy. It says, are internships or career advice available for recent graduate students? And I would say, I believe so. Um, most, I feel like most um, internships kind of want undergraduate students who are in school, but there are a lot of internships who are open to everyone because a lot of corporations and companies, organizations, they understand that it's hard to find a job when you graduate. Like everybody knows it's really hard so that you want to build up your experience. And I've even seen that a lot of companies and things like that, they would love to have you know, recent grad students or recent undergraduate students who just graduated and got their degree and just want to build on it and get some ex experience. So I would say, yeah, um, go for it. Um, even if like it says like, oh, we're looking for this, it doesn't hurt to apply. The worst thing they can say is no. So. You're absolutely right, Jacob. And uh, National Intern Day was started by the Way Up Company four or five years ago uh, as a way to, to honor and recognize the work that interns uh, not only do, but also the value that they bring to an organization. So thank you for the perfect segue. Uh, the, um, a lot of employers will consider an internship uh, because they may have a special project, a short term work assignment. Uh, and, and let's face it, uh, we all like recent grads or current students to help us with our technology uh, and, and to bring that innovative and fresh uh, set of ideas to an organization. So great question, great response, Jacob. Uh, I'm gonna go out, go out of the internship box here a little bit uh, and I'm gonna ask our panelists to share who their favorite Sienna Heights personality is and why. Anybody care to share? That's a tough one. That's not on the. It's not on the questions. That is really tough. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go with Melissa. Um, so no one else can take it, and I got it first. So, um, no, I. I don't know. I mean, uh, it's a. It's like a big family, you know, it's a lot of fun there and I'm sure everyone can relate to that. It, you know, you had a lot of fun and it's enjoyable, um, you know, working in the career services department with Melissa, it was a, it was a great time. It was, it was like a big family in there and uh, it was me and Jake Sperry at the time and, and we had a lot of fun and, and Riley Smith. So we had, we had a good time. It was enjoyable. And uh, I, you know, like I said, I think it was just a big family everywhere you went. Everyone was super friendly and you know, it was awesome. I definitely would have to say there's several people for me. So it would be the math department. Um, if anyone knows the math teachers, they're very energetic and they make for a very um, encouraging learning environment. But yeah, mine definitely be the math department. I kind of 
it's I can't pick one. It's kind of hard. I think everyone bring everyone's personality. That's all like between all the professors, all the departments. Everyone's personality makes the like as a whole just a great experience. Like it's hard to pick a specific personality that make like that's better than anything because they all play very well off of each other and it makes it for a very fun and learning and just like Mike said, like a big family just in general throughout the entire university. It's hard to pick a specific personality because it kind of, they, they feed off of each other, it seems like at times. Okay, uh -huh. this, uh, thank you so much, Melissa and panelists. That was great. Uh, we have used up most of our time. Um, Sarah has been looking at your questions as they came in and is ready to share them. Sarah, what questions do you do our guests have for Melissa or the panelists? Yes, thank you so much and thank you to all of you and to Melissa. I, I've learned so much more about all of you and it's just great to hear um, what you're doing and the experience that you've had at Siena. We do have a question in the chat um, and it says, Tell us what you learned about yourself, your strengths, areas for improvement or insight as a result of doing your internship. And any one of you can answer that. I think um, for me, for my in from my internship, um, in terms of things I needed to definitely improve was um, taking better care of myself. I have I think we take self-care for granted and doing work every day um, and being supportive of other people and just giving giving your best every day and um, seeing the things that people go through, um, taking the time out of the day to also give that same love and affection to yourself is so essential and so um, necessary to, to go about life. Um, you deserve the same love and respect that you give to the others. Well, that's a good one and definitely out of the box. Um, so I appreciate you sharing that. Anyone else? Well, if not, then I have um, some specific ones. Um, someone said, congratulations, Jacob. Can you tell us what a fellowship is and do you have any advice for students that are looking to get their grad school fully funded like yourself? Um, first off, thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, and for me, I mean, oh, well, a fellowship is, so with the fellowship, uh, nine times out of 10, they're going to pay full tuition for your, um, your time at the, in the program. And within my fellowship, I also have a part-time TA, which is a teacher's assistant. So not only are they paying for me to go to school, they're also going to pay me to, fulfill a duty. So it's pretty uh, good. I have a job within the package. Um, I have health care. Um, they also gave me a signing bonus. So within, so fellowship is great. Um, when I was in high school, my math teacher once told something to me that stuck with me for life. He was like, I'm gonna tell y'all something before y'all go to college. He said, if you ever choose to go to grad school, you should never pay for it. And we all kind of looked at each other like, what you mean? Like, some people's not good enough to do that. He was like, he's like, no, look at me. If you ever go to grad school, you should never pay for it. He said, it's so many opportunities. There's so many programs in this world. Who will pay for you? If one, if one program don't, the other one will. He said, trust me. As long as you're doing your part as a student and you're, you know, you keep your grades up and you're getting involved in, in undergrad and things like that, someone's going to be paying for you. And with me being in McNair, and they helped me guide through me and um, Callie Claire and other faculty members. They wrote great letter re recommendations for me and helped me uh, write my statement of purpose and, and help me with my applications. I was fortunate enough to get accepted into four grad programs. It's just that when it came down to it, Michigan State um, came with me with this fellowship offer that it was too good to just pass up. You know, it's not every day where a program is going to come to you and they like you and they like, they also like my research and things like that. And it was like, hey, we're going to give you this fellowship. Will you come here with us and elaborate your knowledge with us and 
it was just hard to turn it down even though wow I'm, that's incredible oh yeah i definitely know <laughs> even though i'm a very long time michigan wolverine fan is <laughs> you know you still can't pass it up so <laughs> um thank you thank you so much i think that will help a lot of people and and that is great advice and i know you're being a little modest here but uh you are also i believe the president of meta distinction so when he talks about being involved on campus jacob was involved in so many things and that's definitely a way to stand out in those graduate um applications so i'll, I'll sing your praises a little more This next one is for Melissa. Someone said, when should students start looking for an internship? Is there a certain year of, of when they're in college or certain time? What do you suggest? Well, I think that that is an excellent question. And it's, it's really uh, germane to, to the student, to their academic program. Uh, but also to what the employer is looking for, because uh, some internships are, are created with the idea of, you know, it, it can be a, a very entry level skill building. Uh, you know, we, we don't have a, a, a course requirement, whereas I'll use the accounting department for an example. Um, accounting interns usually have almost, uh, you know, all of their coursework under their belt. They might be a, a you know, a, a summer of their junior year. Uh, so it's, it's really dependent upon the situation. Uh, but it's a conversation that, that students should have uh, with their academic advisor uh, and their faculty mentor, uh, because your faculty are your experts in the field. So I'll use Chris for an example. Uh, you know, having the relationship with the engineering faculty, uh, they know the industry leaders, they know the industry positions. Uh, so really, really starting those conversations early in your academic career. Is that helpful? Yes, very much, thank you. Um, someone said, I think this is a good one, especially now. Um, someone said, for some of you just starting off in your work life, how has your work, work life changed with this pandemic crisis? Are you working from home? Are you in the office? I can take this one on. I guess so. I started last July, so I just like I last I guess beginning of July so I just finished up my first year and we started working from home I want to say probably the first or second week of March and I will say it's definitely different I was in the middle of training for a new position and the training had to take a stop basically because they didn't know how they were going to do it through the computer basically and then we went on then a couple months went by and we weren't going back to the office anytime soon. And so they're like, okay, so we picked up the training again. So it was definitely a, it's a definitely a learning experience trying to learn a brand new position when you aren't able to be in person asking questions, you have to video chat, you have to send IMs just to try to get an answer. And for someone like me who does a lot better, like hands-on learning, having someone next to me learning, it's, it was definitely a challenge, but it's def it's one of those things that we've had to adapt to. And this is obviously what we're going through right now. This is how it's going to be. So I will say like, it's definitely different, but it's one of those, take it as a learning opportunity to better your skills. This is something we could take on. Like you could be like, oh, I actually can help lead things. I can help do things through video chats and so that because I've had to do it before. You can use it as a learning opportunity. That's a great positive spin. Anyone else? Uh, for me, it's been really different um, giving, I'm used to sitting in a small room with people and doing therapy um, and, and help, helping people like that. Um, so it's different being in a different city and talking to them either over the phone or over video chat and doing therapy. Um, so finding that separation between work and, and home life is very, it, it can be challenging. Um, 
and I, I think sometimes there are things lost when you're not face to face with someone, but it, we're, I'm so grateful that technology is what it is today. Um, if it wasn't, I think we'd be kind of not, not as good. <laughs> very, very true. Well, I think one of our last ones is a really important one. Um, someone said, what job search advice would you have for recent alumni, um, maybe that are having a hard time finding a position? Maybe you could talk about how you found your own position or um, you know, if it, if it took a while. I, I think sometimes people like to know that, that sometimes it doesn't happen right away, but, but we all go through that. I can uh, help with this one. Yeah, patience is key. Um, you know, as bad as as you want that job, you know, all the hard work you put in through college and you want to hit the ground running, um, you know, sometimes not, you know, some people are fortunate enough where they have something ready right there when they leave and other people are, are searching for a little bit, trying to land that, that job that, they're, that they've worked so hard for. So, you know, I think just kind of staying active, um, making sure your resume is up to date, um, staying up with the times and, you know, just kind of searching, searching approved, like, you know, uh, job posting boards and stuff like that. If you're looking for a certain company, usually companies have, you know, uh, employment status uh, for positions that are being posted on their websites. So, you know, just kind of keep searching and staying positive. Um, I remember post-graduation, I didn't get my job right away. And I actually uh, started working as an intern at U of M post-graduation. So like I said, you know, everyone takes a different route and, you know, very fortunate where I ended up today. But yeah, I mean, there's times that, you know, it got long and you're trying to stay upbeat and positive with it. But again, just remember all the hard work you put in and don't, don't lose faith in yourself. Keep trusting yourself and it'll pan out. Thanks, Mike. Great advice. Anyone else? I think just to quickly add on to that, career services, that's um, Sarah actually sent an email out to a, a, my advisor and my advisor had passed it on and I sent Sarah an email back. Career services always, they'll have all the job postings. They're gonna be able to help you when you're a student, once you've graduated, just always make, make like use your resources that you have from Siena. They, they take you very, they'll take you very far and they'll be very helpful for you. Thanks for the shout out, Casey. <laughs> no, the perfect timing. You, I think you said, you know, you felt like things fell in your lap and that's how I felt um, that day we got that, that opening and Casey jumped on it right away. And I think that's uh, really important advice to any current students or alumni is don't hesitate, don't wait. You know, if you see something that fits you, then make sure you, you know, that you jump on uh, opportunity right away so that you're, you're one of the first people um, in the application pool. I'm going to just finish up with this last um, anonymous uh, question that came in uh, and it says how, you know, is there ways to be involved when you're an online student or an adult learner? And I will say that especially th this upcoming year, this academic year, there will be more ways than ever to be involved because there will be so much more um, student engagement opportunities offered online that I'm sure will continue after this year. So uh, please stay in touch with us um, and, and check in and ask, continue to ask that question because we will definitely let you know what comes up. Um, I'm going to send it back to Melissa, but thank you again for tuning in. And Melissa will kind of close us out, but thank you for tuning in with us tonight and thank you um, panelists. But don't go anywhere. Melissa's got the last part. Well, thanks, Sarah, so much. Uh, on your screen now, we have the information about career services and alumni relations. And I just want to reiterate uh, everything that's been said tonight about Siena Heights uh, career services and, and the university as a whole. Uh, just real quickly, some of the areas that uh, career services can assist Current students and alumni are resume reviews, resume development, uh, jobs and internship skill development. Uh, we offer a lot of tips for networking, uh, interview skills, uh, personal branding. We can help with LinkedIn development. 
Uh, our website is listed there and the contact information for all of the staff is listed on that uh, careerservices.sienaheights.edu website. Uh, alumni Relations uh, has a lot of exciting things planned uh, virtually uh, for the upcoming year. Uh, I, I want to draw your attention to the Connect with Students or Alums on Saints Connect. Uh, that's an awesome place for mentoring relationships. Uh, current students can, can link up with alumni. Uh, so I would encourage everyone to, to create an account and uh, check that out. Uh, and just to, to wrap things up on this National Intern Day, uh, I want to say on behalf of Career Services and Siena Heights University Alumni Relations, thank you to our panelists uh, for sharing your Siena stories with us. We are so proud of you and your accomplishments. Thank you to our guests for joining us. If anyone has further questions about experiential education, career services, or alumni relations, please feel free to reach out to us via the information on your screen. Uh, and thank you again for sharing with us tonight. Thanks to all our panelists. Thanks to Melissa and Sarah for sharing insights and leading the discussion. I hope all our guests enjoyed tuning in tonight. Have a great night and stay safe. Thanks so much.